Wait. No. There's no way, dude. Oh my god, it's Ryan Newman! No! No, I'm not emotionally prepared for this, dude. Please, go away, drive off. Don't look at me. Don't look at me, damn it. Newman, go away. No! Oh no. Ladies and gentlemen of the internet. Yeah. We're doing it again. Hello and good evening. Welcome back to NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup. Again. Last time, we... Well, last time things got a little bit interesting. We... I mean, we did good in wheeling. We did really good in the first series. Trucks was kind of painful, but we survived. Then the Bush series was agonizing from start to finish, and nothing good happened in the Bush series. But now, we're back. We are indeed back. Again. For the third time. In NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup. You see, the reason that the previous series ended was because the exact same thing happened to the original series happened again. Which is my memory card killing itself for no reason other than to make me miserable. Which means we get to start over again. Again. Again, we are indeed starting over. Hey, it's Ryan Newman. Man, that was some right. Is it? Is it now? I don't know if you've ever considered a racing career. Oh, have I considered a racing career? That's a good question, sir. See you around. I hadn't, actually. This is this is the first time that I've been a uh, that I've been offered such such a thing. So welcome back once again. In the other two attempts at this playthrough, I played as Justin Allgaier, and then I played as Michael Annette. Well, we are not going to complete the H. Scott Racing Trifecta because I'm pretty sure Boyer's already in this game, and like, who cares about Boyer anyway? No, today, today we are going to take a look into the past to play the shitty games that suck ass. Actually, no. No, it's not shitty, but, you know, the point that I'm trying to make is that it's not the greatest. Today, we are going to save another Justin's career. Justin Labonte. In the year 2003, 2004, Justin Labonte was 23. Boop. He is from Trinity. Uh, North Dakota, perfect. Um, and he's going to be on... Perfect. Um, he's let himself go a little bit, admittedly, after his uh, fuel mileage win in 2004, which is actually the year that this game takes place in. But he's actually not in the game, interestingly. That's the custom setup that we're going to be doing. It's the same thing as the other three attempts, or two attempts. This is number three. And we're doing autosave, too. Don't worry, I'm on a memory card that I don't care about if anything happens to it. The only thing that's on this is the NASCAR Thunder 2004 Insane Universe, where we did those streams. But, like, it's been so long since I've done one of those streams that it's probably never going to happen again. And even if I do go back, it's probably going to be in Thunder 2003. Moving on! Ryan Newman assigned me to drive his Feather Thy Modified car! Woo! Let's go. First things first, we're going to turn down the music. Because even though, even though this game has one of the best soundtracks in video game history, oh, and we get to also set our favorite driver, um, obviously. Obviously, that's going to save the game for that, yeah. Another autosave, don't mind me, don't mind me, just sitting here through the autosave. But yeah, yeah, like I was trying to say. Like I was trying to say, <laughs> um... There's nothing of value on this memory card, so if it dies again, then we'll be fine. For some reason, you can't change the audio settings in the actual uh, career mode, so we'll turn down music. We'll keep it down there just so that the EA tracks keeps popping up in the corner. I always like to know what songs I could be listening to if it wasn't if YouTube wasn't an absolute totalitarian state when it came to things like copyright music. As you see, we have once again gotten the contracts for the Dodge Classic 192. Hey, it's 
Everything sucks. This is the race shop. We don't have anything because I just restarted the game. Surprisingly, it did not autosave the fact that I had that phone call. So here's the first race of the season at Red Ball Raceway. Let's get this show on the road. Oh man, oh man. We are indeed back again. There's nothing special. Oh my god, what am I doing? I have to change the control seam here. Control figuration two. Perfect. Otherwise, I'm going to go insane. Now we can drive with R2 and L2. Yeah, there's nothing special about this series. We're just going to play through it normally as if this was a normal playthrough of any other game. We're not, you know, starting last in every race or anything. But yes, welcome back again to NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Coupe. She's for the coop. Yes, indeed. Pole position, imagine that. Yeah, this game is really lax in its qualifying for the most part. Got it by one one thousandth of a second, all right. All right, that actually is a little bit concerning. Okay, here we go. Let's begin again in the night. So, welcome back once again to NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup. We are indeed back once again. <laughs> now the thing about this series is that uh, the Feather Lane Modifieds are interesting in that you actually cannot go down, well you can go down pit road but it won't do anything. And um, so there's, there's, there's no need to worry about fuel even though tires do wear. Now the thing about this game that a lot of people know is that it actually the AI are cheaters. You see, the thing is, is that your tires wear out, um, but the AI's tires do not. I think that man just died. No, he survived. He tried to die. He tried to commit suicide just then, but he was unable to complete the, um, the, uh, the act. So, I mean, depending on how his life is going, maybe good, maybe bad, but hey. Your tires wear out, but the AIs do not. So, we're looking pretty strong right now. But in about three laps, this car is going to be completely undrivable, and these guys are going to be up my ass like you wouldn't believe. Now, normally this wouldn't be a problem, as we'd just, you know, survive for a few laps and then just let everything be. The problem is, is that there are no caution flags in this series. There are no cautions in Featherlight. And even though that there's a fuel and tire wear and all that, um, you actually can't go down pit, well you can go down pit road, but it won't do anything. You can't actually pit for tires or fuel. See, there goes our tires, but these guys' tires, these guys' tires are fine. So basically we're just parking it on the inside line and trying to not push up the track. That's basically the entire strategy at this point. I'm at a very bad angle too, by the way. I'm sitting in this chair in a very bad angle, like my body's going in one direction, my head's going in another. So overall, this is just not a good time in general. This race. Oh, two more laps, dude. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Parking the car in the in the in the center of the turns is just it's not helpful. We're not we're not getting very far with this. I mean, I actually did pull away from third, the guys behind me there, but it looks like we're going to be finishing third in race number one of the season. Not an amazing, not an immaculate start to the season by any stretch of the imagination, but it's very good because, you see, most of the time, people head into Red Bull, first race of the season, and then they just wreck in the first race. And then, and then you pretty much finish, you're pretty much finishing 22nd for sure, no matter what. So there you go. We get to split. The uh, 10 bonus points for most laps led, so that's good. Good start to the season. The races will get easier from there. There's only a couple of races in Wheeling that are actually, like, very hard to get. But I'm, I'm sad about this. My first ever race. And I'm sad. Well, that's depressing. Justin Labonte is just going to be sad at all times. I'm going to be sad. That is just sad. Well, all right, now you've got a so there's a lot of phone calls in this game, but not a lot of them matter. It's just because it was a new system. The phone calls were a brand new thing 
a NASCAR 2005 chase for the cup. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, they were. And the best part about it is that we have... Oh, it's not showing up here. We're supposed to have singular wireless, but that might be uh, the next game. Because it looks like we just have generic phone brand here. Yeah, so there's nothing going on there right now. Um, there's really nothing going on anywhere except for races. So let's head to the Milwaukee Mile. Hey, And welcome to Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah. You see, the thing is, is that I've done this. How many times now? That's the story of the series, is that we're just doing the same thing again, and again, and again. But that's alright. I know in the uh, amount of time that it's been since I've attempted to play this game, a whole bunch of other people have played through this, and like have had what a lot more success than I did. You see, the thing is, is that I, I didn't do any practice. I wasn't practicing. It felt not like like in every other series that I did, NASCAR 07, NASCAR 08, or basically every career mode except for the Tony Reigns series, I did without practice. So like if I actually did start doing practice, it would have felt like I was delegitimizing the actual, you know, playthrough. And I'm sure if I'd actually like practiced some tracks, I probably would have sucked a whole lot less than I did. But you can't win them all, can you? You can't win them all. In any case, coming out of turn four, at the line, good lap, good lap, eighth, never mind, not good lap. Any, any lap that gets you to start on the outside is a bad lap. All right, let's try and survive. First thing I'm going to do is just shove this guy all the way down to the white line so I can get to the bottom. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And we're in business. So, if you've never played NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup, in which case, um, where have you been? Were you born in 2010? Um, there is a new feature in this game. That carried its way throughout most of the history of the NASCAR games, all the way till present day. Um, the new feature is Intimidator, but the actual feature that's carried its way through is Allies and Rivals. That started in NASCAR Thunder 2004. And don't worry, it's just equally as difficult, or, or yeah, it's equally as easy to get Rivals in this game, but it's so much easier to get rid of them. We are going to use a little thing called the share draft feature. If you ever need some fat hero points with Rocky Glover, if you just draft with them for the entire length of the straightaway, you can unlock the share draft feature. Or if you want his bitch ass to move out of the way, well, you can use the Exhibitator feature. It's really just however you want to play the game. Make it your game. It'll be a lot easier to make friends later on in the game because in all likelihood, I, I try my best to be a clean driver in these games. I I've noticed that like in, um, in most playthroughs of these games, the people that I watch end up just wrecking everyone every single week, but I don't want to be like that. Like, I could just take out my championship competition in every single race. Especially in Wheeling when there's no cautions. But where's the fun in that? The problem that we got going here is that these guys just have... Are just able to carry a lot more speed through the corners than I am! Oh! That might be the first contact of the entire playthrough, actually. Yeah. I mean, especially in this series, I try my best to not run into anybody because, just because of the uh, lack of caution. Because like I said before, there is absolutely no way that, um, that you're going to finish anywhere other than like second to last at best if you wreck in a race. 
in wheeling because there's just barely any catch up abilities. When there's no cautions, you just you physically cannot catch up to anyone. And I feel like I'm putting down some of the best laps that I have all race and I'm not even catching up to these guys here. That's not even the tire wear's fault. My last lap was like within a tenth of my pre of my best lap. It's like, come on. This this playthrough should go decently. The first playthrough I think was plagued with controller issues. Now I've got an actually good controller, so that should uh, no longer be a thing. I think that was the previous playthrough. I want to say that I was using that controller for like the first season or whatever, but like, I know it was a problem in NASCAR Thunder 2004, but it shouldn't be a problem here. As long as nothing stupid happens, I shouldn't throw down my controller in anger. Really what I need to do is ask my landlord to put in some carpet <laughs> into this, into this room. It's like, seriously. Seriously, if I just had carpet, I'd be able to have a lot more free reign with things. Because I don't, oh. All right, all that work of catching up to these guys, undone in one corner. Ah, oh, this game makes me hate things. We're gonna, I'm gonna be mad eventually, but n hopefully not today. Hopefully that day is not today and the day that I am mad. What are you doing, son? See, that lap was barely any worse than the previous one. But in the previous one, I fucking hit the wall. It's like, dude, dude, dude. All right, this guy is getting on my nerves. He needs to move his ass. Oh, oh, just tapped him. Oh, I just tapped him. Come on. Oh, side by side. I don't have momentum. Wait, did I beat him? I thought I didn't have the momentum. I beat him. Get rail, Bill Calhoun. Calhoun. Yo, my bitch. Yo, my bit. Am I at least happy here? Yeah. Yeah, I think if you lead the most laps in a race but don't win, your character gets mad or something. Or, like, it's disappointing. There's a lot of post-race cutscenes in this game. Like, I'm still finding cutscenes I've never seen. So, we're gonna increase prestige. Next race is the Door County 150. I wonder if that's where Door Incorporated is based. But this is Old Spice. This is a custom road course that has that has appeared in games ever since it started here. No, it's only it's an EA Games exclusive, which is sad because it's a very good track. It's actually very fun. It's a high speed road course. And like only one of the corners is actually, you know, slightly difficult, but that's only because if you clip the apron you die. And EA Games became famous over the course of the years for having their aprons of death. But this this apron, this is the original apron of death, okay? You can actually hit the apron at Dover in this game. It doesn't go great for you, but you can. In future EA NASCAR games, you can. Very good corner, that one. Very good corner. This is that corner. I'm just going to give it a wide berth. It's just not worth it to even come close. But this is Old Spice. You know, some brave soul imported this track to NASCAR Racing 2003, and it's like, dude. There was a guy that was importing, like, Gran Turismo tracks into NR2003. I was... I don't know what site that was. That was probably one of the many sites that shut down, you know. One of the many sites that absolutely fell apart. Because NR2003 is not a very stable, uh, a very stable platform right now. Very good corner. That was a good corner. Right, that right there, that was a good corner. I really want the pole in this race because racing cars, racing actual, you know, the AI, 
at road courses in NASCAR in EA NASCAR games is just a miserable experience. And I just want no part of it. Come on, Paul. Hate this game. Eleven. You're telling me I qualified eleven? Dude. Because you can flat foot that corner, but you gotta get out of the gas here. Very good. That was a very good corner, taking in that corner. I just need to break more in here, basically, is what I needed to do. Yeah. Yeah, that alone. That alone probably shaved a second off the lap there. Everything that I did right there. You see, the thing is, is that whenever I get a pole in eye racing, it's because I know to flat foot the track and no one else does. We did that at Kansas. There was a build for Kansas where in the truck series you could flat foot lap one if you, you know, got your angles right. All right, so I just picked up a second and a half on that one. Nice. And I was basically the only one who knew that, so I'd be like, there'd be like me and like one other guy who knew that in every single, uh, in every single lobby. So if you if, if you see me with a pole on I racing, just know that you should have flat footed the track because there's absolutely no way that I got that on my own. All right, this first corner at this track is just terrifying. We need to flat foot it as best as possible. And now just be safe through this corner. I said be safe through this corner. All right, as long as I don't wreck, I should have the race won. Very good, very good. See. The thing about racing the AI at these tracks is that they go hard for that first corner, but then for the rest of the lap, it's just basically dodging the track. It's just dodging the pack. It's just, it's just terrifying. So, well, we're gonna be here for a while. Do I have anything to discuss? I made some keto-friendly tacos yesterday. It was very good. This is the first time that I've made tacos since moving out. They were very, very good. I used the uh, high fiber um, taco shell because, like, I say that I'm trying to do keto because I said I would. But, like, I failed utterly in every, you know, conceivable fashion. I failed in every way to do keto, but I am doing keto. But yeah, I mean, I used, you know, like, store brand shredded cheese and, like, De Otega taco sauce, but, um, you know, everything else was keto friendly. See, that's the thing, is that when I agreed to do keto, I was like, oh, I'm sure I could eat, like, you know, I'm sure I can eat, you know, basically just nothing but meat, nuts, and like yogurt and stuff but then I actually you know went to the store and I looked at my favorite yogurt and like there was like 20 grams of sugar in this I'm like um excuse me excuse me even the good stuff like even Dan and Oikos has like you know 10 grams of carbs and it's like just like not even just like the keto diet itself but just cutting carbs in general is a good thing but like you don't realize that basically everything in the grocery store is just processed carbohydrates. It's like, we really eat this shit? Like, it's no wonder everyone's fat. Everything has a shit ton of carbs in it. It's just an offensive level of carbohydrate. It's a killer. The silent killer. Move over carbon monoxide. Carbohydrates has you beat. But no, it's true. Like, that's the reason why everyone's so fat is because everything is made with high fructose corn syrup. It's not a conspiracy. It's just the way it be. It sucks. Yeah, obviously it sucks. But, like, no one's gonna know that. Everyone gets taught to cut out fat. Everyone gets told to cut out junk food, and it's like, okay, but like, unless you tell people the reason to do that, they're not gonna care, I know I didn't. I know I didn't give a shit, I was like, I don't care, food good. I like good food, food that does not taste good is not good. Like, if they wanted me to eat it, they would make it taste good, seriously. Because I know that's the issue that I've run into, is that based, I've replaced all sodas 
with like zero carb. Um, zero carb equivalents. So like, you know, Mango Pepsi just came out, and I've been having that, but in the Coke, but in like the zero. Coke Zero came first, so I'm, that's what I'm gonna call it. But like, yeah, I've been doing Pepso, Pepso, Pepsi Mango, Zero Sugar. And it's like, yeah. But like, the thing is, is that that stuff is still gonna be littered with like garbage that's just gonna make you fat anyway. Like, the real thing that you should be drinking is just like tea, sparkling ice. <laughs> Carbonated water is fine, you know. If, it's still water. It's just a better thing to consume than, you know, pop. And it's like, the thing is, is that when I was growing up, I never drank soda ever because I hated how it made you burp. Whenever I burp when I drink pop now, I still hate it. I still fucking hate it. Because all the carbonation just goes straight through your nose and it just burns. Like, even when you burp with your mouth, it still just goes straight up your nose and it just... It's awful. The feeling. It's it's horrendous. I hate it still. But I never drank pop as a kid, and now I go to the dentist every six months, and they're like, "Dude, your your teeth are in such good shape. How do you do it?" And it's like, you know, and and me sitting here after having that five year period where I basically stopped brushing my teeth, and I hear them say that, I'm like, um. You are aware that, like, this is, like, the first time that I've brushed my teeth in years. The plaque buildup was hideous. But the actual condition of the teeth was great. Anyway, that's three races done. My first career win. Ryan Newman calls to congratulate. Good. You love to see it. Thanks, new man. So, I'm real fast. And the fact that you're a racer is a fiddle-dee-doo. My mom says, I says, let's all die here. I don't understand why. Gonna take that package. Are we going to take the package? <laughs> it's good for your health. Your legs will get stronger. We're cars! We don't have legs! <laughs>